Well, some really cool news. Uh, Snohomish, where they had all those armed citizens to make sure they protected their city from Antifa and any other uh, groups that were going to come in and agitate uh, peaceful protesters. Because um, all of us want to make sure people can protest peacefully. I don't think anyone disagrees about that. And I don't think anyone in the country or the world disagrees that uh, the um, murder of George Floyd should be um, prosecuted, you know, against those four cops. So I, I think everyone's in agreement on that. At least I have not met anyone that disagrees with any of that. The division is all the other antics and left versus right uh, games that everyone likes to play. But this is the only thing I wanted to say that was really refreshing. Um, and it makes me, it, it, it saddens me, I guess, a little that you really can't trust anything on Facebook or the internet anymore unless you triple vet it. That's why I only trust a couple people that are independent journalists that triple and quadruple vet and fact check and they have independent fact checkers. That's the way it used to be done in journalism. Anyone that's an old school journalist or went to school for journalism, you know, 10, 20 years ago, uh, when you wrote a story, you were not allowed by the company to fact check your own story. It had to be done independently by a different organization, uh, possibly within the same company, but on a different floor or something uh, that was completely non-biased. In other words, um, they, they, everyone knew, and this is not a, a left or right thing, everyone knew that if you allowed reporters to vet or fact check their own stories, that every, everything would end up being biased and a lie and here we are today where I, I don't know the percentages none of us do but I would say a majority of stuff on Facebook and the internet and Twitter and stuff is absolutely not true so why do I say this because I always rail on the media I just rail on the fourth state the media uh, because all they do is lie. They lie because they hate Trump. That's what fuels them, and therefore they lie. Whatever it takes to get him out of office or hurt him, throw mud at him. They haven't been able to do it in four years and make anything stick. He's probably going to get reelected. Maybe he'll lose. I don't know. I'm not a fortune teller. I, I'm not running his campaign or anything like that. I like most of his policies. I think he's rough around the edges. I think he was the right guy for the job. We needed a dirty Harry to come in here and uh, drain the swamp. Uh, but that's a, another subject. Uh, but it doesn't mean I always support his decisions or his viewpoints or how he acts. And and he certainly is not the most eloquent speaker. I, I, I know this. I think everyone knows this. But I don't, I don't just hate the guy. Hey, Obama was the worst president we've ever seen. A lot of people believe this. A lot of think tanks all over the world believe this. It doesn't make it true. That's my opinion. That's a lot of people's opinions based on a lot of facts. But that doesn't make it fact. That is our opinion based on how he conducted himself, what kind of policies he ran. But I did not hate Obama. I did not hate his family. I never wanted harm to come his way. That's the, the difference is that this Trump derangement syndrome and this hatred towards Trump is unlike anything we've since seen since Abraham Lincoln. The last time we had a president that fought for right versus wrong and morality and, uh, and stuff like that. So anyways, let's get right to the point. Snohomish. A lot of armed citizens uh, took to the streets to make sure Antifa, uh, anti-fascist groups and, and people like that did not come in and turn peaceful protesters and, and peaceful protests into uh, burning and looting, which nobody wants. I, I would say that, that I'm speaking for everyone on that. 
for people that don't like me and people that like me and people that agree with me and people that don't agree with me. Nobody wants their cities burned down. Nobody wants their houses burned down or anything like that except for Antifa and people like that and possibly these people that are trying to start a civil war. So I saw a post today saying, hey, look, it was a big, a bunch of white supremacists went to Snohomish and they showed a picture of a Confederate flag. This is the lie. That's fake news, a complete lie, and it's 100% proven to be a lie. So if you see that story or you see that on Facebook, it is a blatant lie. If you posted that, go ahead and take it down and either apologize or just take it down. I've had a couple of posts lately that a friend of mine from high school posted or shared with me. They were fake news. I immediately took them down. And I'm really getting leery about reposting anything anymore because I don't know what's true and what's not. That's why I only trust a few people. But I had two people one person I know, another person that the person I know knows. The one person I know is a conservative. The other person, his friend a very, very long time, of a very long time, is a hardcore anti-Trump liberal. Okay, so you have two different viewpoints. But they both said thank you to those armed citizens. The liberal and her husband, who's also a liberal, and my friend who is a conservative. They were both at Snohomish. They witnessed it firsthand. Not by the news, not by memes, not by pictures, not from MSNBC or Fox News or CNN. They were there. There was one, one Confederate flag brought by one dude. That's it. Of course, somebody snapped a picture, made it look like everyone was doing that kind of stuff. And it happens to be that the the liberal and the conservative both said the guy with the Confederate flag did not act racist. He was not a nasty person. He didn't do anything nasty. I guess he just thinks that's a cool thing to bring to one of those things. Now, you could say a Confederate flag means you're racist. I don't know the guy's heart. I don't know him. He's not a friend of mine. All I'm saying is this. We'd all be a little bit better if we just told the truth and not spread lies. The people in Snohomish were of all different races. There were whites, blacks, Asians, Latinos, there were all different religions. There were atheists. There were agnostics. There were Christians. There were Catholics. Uh, there was everyone represented there. There were gay people there. There were lesbians. There were straight people. Every single type of people were represented there. And they were thankful. All of them were thankful that everyone came together put their differences aside and protected their city against these thugs. And what, about, what I mean by a thug is someone who's a criminal that's an agitator that tries to turn peaceful protest into burning and looting events. That's it. Let's quit lying. Let's quit dividing when we don't need to divide. Now, if there's a reason to divide over something, so be it. You have to make your own decision. But I don't think that's the mature adult decision or way to deal with things. Enough of the blame games, enough of the he said, she said, enough of the, oh, if this person did this, what about that person? You know, that's just shifting blame. How about personal accountability? A white cop killed a black man and he murdered him. That was one million percent wrong. He tortured him to death. But that doesn't mean it's okay to riot and burn the nation down and hurt other innocent people. 
George Floyd's family's begging people to stop. George's brother is begging people to stop and said his brother would never support this. His brother spoke a very uplifting, inspiring, good message. I shared it a couple days ago. George's actual YouTube message directly from George before he was murdered. He was not a person that went out and committed violence and hurt people. He was not that man. That cop deserved to go to prison and then get, get to play with the inmates there. And you know what I mean by play. Karma. He'll get what's coming to him. And I have no sympathy for him. I hope he finds his way to grace and forgiveness with Jesus Christ before he gets to prison. Because once he gets there, he probably won't last more than a week. So be it. He made that decision to murder an unarmed black man. I'm sorry. I can't feel sorry for him. I can't. And you know what? I also don't feel sorry for someone in the street trying to loot or burn a place down and trying to hurt someone and being killed in the street from someone defending themselves against getting killed. Right is right and wrong is wrong. There's no way around it. No way. Let's come together. Let's come together. Let's act like adults, not kids. This is not a liberal thing. This is not a conservative thing. It's not progressives or liberals versus conservatives and Republicans or Democrats versus Republicans. I know the left and the liberals want to blame everything on Trump. I get it because they hate him. I get it. All I'm pleading with all my liberal friends and everyone out there is put aside the hate for at least a couple weeks and focus on George Floyd and his family. We know you hate Trump. That's okay. You have a right to. Do I think it's healthy? No, of course not. Do I think it's mature? Of course not. You can disagree and dislike politicians, but you don't have to hate them and let them live inside your head rent free. So, if you have a post or you see a post that shows all those people are white supremacists or white supremacy groups in Snohomish, that is a full on, full out, full blown lie from the pit of hell. My friend went there. He was there. He's conservative. His friend, hardcore anti-Trump, hates Trump, liberal, was there. One person with a Confederate flag was there, and we don't even know if that guy was racist. Everyone else was every type of person just trying to protect their city. Is there anything wrong with that? Are we not allowed to protect ourselves and protect our cities? If someone attacks you or tries to break into your house or anything like that, are you not allowed to defend yourself and protect your family and defend your family? I think you can. Someone last night shot and killed a rioter who was trying to take his gun from him and he the uh, city prosecutor said it was lawful self-defense and the guy is released that's the end of it that was all videotaped it was all recorded and it's over he killed the guy last night and you know what I have to say to that the same thing I have to say to that cop going to prison Maybe you shouldn't have jumped on an armed guy and tried to take his gun from him because he has a right to defend himself. What do you think 
he thinks you're going to do when he has a gun on him and you're trying to fight him for his gun. He thinks you're going to use it against him. You're already mad. You're a rabid dog. Anyone who is riding and burning down buildings is nothing more than an animal, a thug. Antifa, they're not tough. They're cowards. They're entitled brats that throw her temper tantrums and are living in their mom and dad's basement, living off the government tent. They're punks. They're punks, people. They're cowards. They're only tough when they come out in numbers. Take them aside and give them a beat down. They'll run home to their mom or dad. Look at the Antifa guy today that got paraded into the police department by his dad. He's facing felony charges and will go to prison. His dad turned him in. I'm sorry. I don't feel sorry. For what's coming to these, these Antifa and groups and anyone else that think they can agitate crowds. Now, are there white supremacists intermixed with Antifa? Probably. I don't know how many. They all have different viewpoints, but they share a lot of viewpoints. They share a very anti-government theme. They hate the government. They don't like any type of authority over them. A lot of them are racist. They want disorder and anarchy. They want an authoritarian control. A lot of them are Bernie bros and they love communism and they want full communism. But they really don't because they're, they're uneducated typically and they don't even understand what communism is. If we were to stop our country today and turn it into a communist nation in the next week, they would hate that too. They would lose all control. They would be forced to work. And all their money would go to the government. Trust me, they would not like that. Communism is not a pie-in-the-sky great ideology. It's just not. It's not a great worldview. It's never been successful in the history of the world. Just like socialism or Marxism. It's never worked. Antifa are real fascists. They're left-wing, hardcore left-wing fascists. Most fascists come from the far left. Just like racism came from the far left. Slavery came from the far left. It did not come from the right. It came from the left. Republicans, and I'm not a Republican, Republicans fought to free slaves. They fought to give blacks the right to vote. They fought for all those civil rights. Democrats fought against those rights. That's why there's an awakening in the black communities of what's really going on. But all I have to say is be careful of fake news. I've been caught a couple times in the last week with posts that I thought I had verified. I tried to check on them and found out they weren't true and I had to take them down. One of my good friends who's pretty much, he's hardly ever wrong on what he posts as far as what I mean by that is I disagree with almost everything he posts, but he doesn't post fake news. But the kicker is this. He's had to take a couple posts down and get corrected lately too. He's had a lot of things pop up that were not right. So all of us can get caught in it. I have all kinds of friends of mine, liberal and Democrat and progressives and Republicans and conservatives and libertarians and independents, everyone um, that are having to take posts down and get corrected and, and stuff like that because... Uh, a lot of the stuff flying around right now just isn't true. And it's too bad that people have to resort to lying and misrepresenting things 
uh, to paint the wrong, pit wrong picture, you know. So anyways, hope you're having a great day. Today is day two, day two of our 10-day prayer challenge. Spend some time with your family. Pray for our nation. Pray for our elected officials. Um, pray for the people that you dislike. Pray for the people you like. Pray for the Antifa members that their hearts are softened and they see the light and they repent and they ask forgiveness and they find grace. Pray for everyone. Pray for George Floyd's family. They need grace and love right now. Pray for all these cities that are burning. Pray for the Democratic governors and mayors that don't know how to handle this. Help them get guidance from above. And maybe we'll see an awakening where you see people like Cuomo become a fired up Christian. And, and go out there and really start getting excited about Jesus, you know? You don't know what God's going to do right now. But I do believe an awakening is coming. I believe uh, major things are happening. And every day is just one more thing, you know? How many things can happen before you go, my goodness, man. Maybe maybe we should reread the book Revelation in the Bible. Because there's a lot of crap coming down. So, uh peace be with you and I hope everyone has a great day and you are highly blessed and you can bless others thank you